Now, I don't know if you were able to see the caption um, for this YouTube video clip, but it tells us that this was done for a party, a get-together, as a fundraising function, and it was done in Florida. So there's the Samoan diaspora in action. Maybe some people that moved there to be associated with the Polynesian Resort in the Walt Disney World. Who, who knows for sure? But it does tell us it's in Florida. Now the dancing uh, is the way it would typically be, but you might have noticed that this, the uh, music is kind of a modern update. It uses digital R&B kinds of things, digital drums, um, electronic instruments like bass and things like that. But it is a traditional Samoan song that's redone in that contemporary rock style, if you will, or R&B style. So the last bullet here on this slide reminds us that music can be traditional string band with vocals or a modern digitized keyboard or drum machine combination plus the vocals. The next genre to introduce to you is the Ma Ulu Ulu and again it's hard to come up with uh, accurate English versions of what these are but we're going to call this a group song with synchronized movements. Is it dancing? Sometimes but sometimes it's more choreography, more movement. We have Western style musical elements in, in Ma'ulu Ulu, usually string band accompaniment, and a Himene style harmonized singing. So uh, a little connection to the West and the way they harmonize the melodies and, and use melodies that are based on the Western major scale. And here's an example to take a look at. <laughs>
And to further reinforce the idea of the Samoan diaspora, there we have a church group from Australia performing out a public kind of presentation. Next we're going to move to the Fa'atao Pati, which is often just known as in English as a men's slap dance or the slap dance, uh, a type of body percussion accompanied by an idiophone, sometimes a lolly, slit log drum, sometimes by the tinny, the uh, biscuit tin that is used, or kerosene tin that is used as a drum, a nice sharp bright sound to that, and no singing. Again, lots of spontaneous shouts, exuberance, uh, fun, but no text, no singing. Okay, uh, what you saw there, for those of you who know about uh, BYU, if you're on campus here, or you know about PCC and presentations over there, you're seeing the old canoe pageant in what is now, what do they call it, the Hale Aloha, it's where they do one of the uh, luau's, and this is the uh, dance they used to do in that time. And we have another version of this, the same dance uh, in the contemporary 2010 uh, new pageant. But I, I thought this was interesting because uh, here we are, PCC 1991. And some people that may be familiar to you if you are on campus here and uh, you become associated in some way with PCC. We have Harold Tuelupe. We have John Maritarangi, who is... Uh, master of the Tahitian dance and now has his own Tahitian dance troupe that travels all around. Uh, we have uh, Bill Kenny who is, oh I should also mention that John Maritarangi is a JV basketball coach at Kahuku High School. Uh, Bill Kenny who is a Honolulu Police Department uh, policeman and uh, Raymond Mangale who is working for PCC in the uh, sales office. So uh, some people that some of you might recognize can see them back in the day. Next I want to share with you the Sa Sa, the seated group dance with synchronized movements. And there's no singing, there's no text, again lots of shouting and lots of exuberance, uh, lots of encouraging one another, uh, joking with one another, but, but no text. It is uh, accompanied by idiophone. Again, it can be uh, lolly, it can be a rolled up mat, it can be a uh, tinny, biscuit tin. Let's take a look at that. These are always great fun. <laughs>
That clip also gives us another idea of the Samoan diaspora. That was a girl's school in Auckland, New Zealand. And very often you'll have the Sasa with mixed male and female groups. And this particular one, all female, because it's obviously an all girls school. Uh, doing a little presentation, doing a little fundraiser, uh, and just showing you the fun and the energy and the exuberance. Um, of the Sasa. Now just a few representative instruments and we actually begin with something that's not technically a musical instrument. We talk about the uses of the body, the hands, etc. So we have a pati, which is a flat hand clap. I don't know if it'll come across with this microphone or not. Uh, our Online course version 2.0. I'll have a video and I'll have some demonstration for that. But it sounds like this. As opposed to the cupped hand, which is called the po. So pati, po. And then there's another thing that happens where we're rubbing hands together, which is called mili. I have to listen back and see if that came across. I've already mentioned a few instruments, the slit log idiophone. Pate is the smallest one that comes from Cook Islands with the LMS missionaries and now adopted and used widely in Samoa. A lolly, which is the larger drum, and that one comes from the Fijian culture. So again, notice these different intra-regional exchanges. And then Longo is the largest kind of drum. If you are on campus and you do have access to PCC, uh, this type of very large slit log can be seen in the PCC Samoan village. It has its own little house, its own little roof over it. And they usually play it just before the Samoan village show uh, to kind of let people know. It's, it's, it's like a signaling device and before they had metal bells that the missionaries brought to ring for church. Uh, they could play, or, or if they don't have access to a metal bell, they can play this to let people know it's time for school, it's time for church, uh, that type of thing. I mentioned the tini, which is just a Samoan transliteration of the word tin. Tin or aluminum cans that could have, might have contained biscuits or crackers or kerosene, obviously coming from the Western cultures. Uh, coming into Samoa with, with the army, with um, other merchants. And as they started to play on that with wooden sticks, they noticed that it had a very bright and sharp sound, the kind of sound that really helped them to get energy for the sasa, for the fatapati men's slap dance, for fire knife twirling, which we haven't discussed in this particular presentation, but many of you know about from seeing uh, Samoan cultural presentations. One more instrument that you will hear in association with these kinds of genres is the fala, which is a rolled up woven mat. And often put a glass soda bottle or a piece of thick wood inside to create more resonance. Uh, but it's beaten with sticks and has a very distinctive kind of sound. Samoans have their, uh, their own version of the nose flute. Again, play with that more pure breath from the nose. And it's called Fangu Fangu. And today, of course, we have many Western adaptations, as we have throughout the Pacific, with string bands. Uh, again, guitar, bass, ukulele. And as you can imagine, the ukulele would come through Cook Islands as well. And uh, the Cook Islands version of the ukulele is very popular in Samoa. And, and now, increasingly, the Hawaiian type of ukulele. And those string bands are the most, most popular accompaniment for the Taolunga dance and the, the music that goes with that. <laughs> 